All right, here's all the tools you need to replace your axles. A breaker bar, um, a ratchet, 3-8 ratchet, pry bar, L-shaped 90 degree plier, 10 millimeter mallet, rubber mallet, a big pry bar, ratchet, 14 millimeter for the brake line if you need to, 32 millimeter for the axle nut, 19 millimeter deep socket, 17 millimeter deep socket, a 19, 17 millimeter wrench, a breaker bar, PB blaster, a 3.8, I mean a one half impact gun, and then of course um, the fully rebuilt axles, LSD, and this is the old one. And then I'm putting these new ones on. Use a size 32 millimeter. Deep socket for the torque bar. That doesn't work. Use this big extension. And now you can impact it out with a half inch. And then do the same for the other side. All right, first step, remove the center cap. There's a little slot right here on the lug. You just gotta pry it out. Next step is remove the cotter pins. Um, I already did it, which is this piece right here. And then the cover. And then do the same for both sides. I, I also forgot to um, just tell you that to use a lot of PP blaster, um, spray it around the thread and then behind the nut as much as you can. Let it sit as long as you can. The longer it sits, the easier it's gonna come off. And then uh, don't let it, watch, don't let it drip down to the wheels or just kind of clean it. So um, PP blaster is your friend. All right, so what happened on the passenger side is that it was on so tight that it broke off my half inch extension. So the next solution, I had to use my air gun for that. So my IR and um, it took it out like butter. So right now it's all nice and loose. So yeah, I'm, I was trying to do this without using any air air tools just basic tools and you know a battery powered half inch but um worst case scenario you need an air gun so your next step is uh removing the wheels Alright, next step, you're going to remove the drain, the drain bolt for the transmission, it's right here, because what happened is when you pull the axles out, there's still fluids in there and it's going to drip out, so during this time, I'm going to might as well replace the transmission fluid as well, because this car has not replaced it yet.
All right, next is almost, the flue is almost drained out. Um, here's your filler nut, and here's the old washer. Um, replace the washer, it's not that expensive. Here's a brand new one. And then here's the part number for it. 90430A0003. Replace for that one, and then the filler one as well. And then you can go watch my other YouTube video on how to change the transmission fluid on it. All right, that's it, brand new washer. And then when you tie in it, just snug it, okay? Don't over torque it. And these are aluminum and they're very fragile. And a lot of transmission I see, they, um, the people tend to over torque it and then it busted, stripped at the nut or, you know, a piece of the transmission of it broke off. So. So right when the the nut touches the transmission, like it can't turn anymore, I just kind of snug it. That's it. And then um, just tighten it about like I would say, um, probably a quarter turn or something. But don't over torque it though. So next thing what you want to do is remove these two two bolt to hold up the ball joint. Remove this piece. Remove this piece. Leave, just loosen it, leave that hang in there. And then remove the ABS line. So for when you pull up the axle, I mean the hub, the axle can just fall out, like you can pull it out. So I have a problem with this bolt um, It's hitting the brake line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the brake line, take the bolt out, install the brake line, and then re-breathe the, the brakes. This is the really dumb design by Toyota. I don't know why they can't, they just flip the nut on this side. So once I put everything back, I wanna flip this bolt on this side so next time, it's a lot easier for you to service um, as well as this boat on top. way too much torque.
Leave the top board in place. ABS line removed. What I did earlier was remove this ABS 10 millimeter socket bolt, this 17 millimeter socket bolt. I was having a hard time because the last guy who worked on it over, really over torqued it. And this, at the bottom strut bolt, I removed it, and then the top one just leave it in place. So, what you're going to do is you're going to pull it out. When you um, remove this ball joint, so there's this two bolt down here that I removed already. So I'm gonna re I'm gonna push this ball joint down, pull it down, and then pull the hub out, so that way the axle can can just free folly, um, fall freely, and then the strap will hold the hub in place, so I can remove the axle easier. Try the ball joint away from the hub. Rubber mallet. And also, we're going to remove this cover, this plastic cover as well, to remove the axle out a lot easier. And um, it's also good to remove the e-brake, pull the e-brake down, so that way the cable, you can pull up on the hub without putting a lot of stress on it. Our right, next step, where the axle carrier is, there is this clip right here you gotta you gotta use a plier pull down on it or push up on it to release the clip so that way the axle can go away from the um the carrier and then um, it should slide right out so what i did to remove the c clip was i used the l-shaped plier and i push up on it and the whole clip just swing out so it was like that and then i just push the plier up it just comes right off. All right, and uh, if everything's out ready, we just slide it out. And then we do the same for the other side. Adrian. Remember this one you're trying to get in? And he said the bearing won't fit.
It's perfect. See? Perfect. Bearing. Perfect. You just gotta move this cap back. This cap was in the way. So you push it back. Fits perfectly. Oh yeah. All right, here's the driver's side with the strap holding the hub up. A loose. That's how it's look. And you just pull it out. If that doesn't work, you get one of these. You put it behind the axle and then you just get a rubber mallet and you just hit it out. And then it'll pop this pass driver's side out. That's it. All right, next up, we're gonna remove the axle seal and replacing it with new ones. So that's the part number for the driver's side, USDM. This is the passenger side, the right side, the left side, the right side. So to remove the axle seal, I already removed it. Um, what you do is be careful when you put it in the transmission. Be careful not to scratch the sil the transmission wall, the side of it. So just kind of get like a big plier, get in there and then just pry it out. So when you do it, try to go like not all the way inside where you can scratch the, the wall of it. Just barely enough so that way the whole thing comes out like that. And there's also a metal ring um, around it. This, this one was easier. This side's a little bit tougher because it's, um, it's a lot bigger. So I put my ply right there. See where it hits that so it's not scratching the cylinder wall. And then this ring is, um, when you put it in, try not to bang it inside this part because this ring is going to come out and you will not have a, a nice seal on your axles. So stick your plier in there and then just pry it out. And then I went to Home Depot and grab one of these guys to, when you hit it in, when you're trying to get the axle seal in, it covers the axle seal really nice on the, on the driver's side, the left side, um, compared to if you want to, a lot of people, they just kind of put it inside here, and then that's what caused this ring to come out. This ring right here come off, and then you don't have a nice seal. And um, what you do is put a little grease around here or um, transmission oil so that way it comes nice and smooth in. So just kind of stick it in like this. And just get like a rubber mallet and just kind of lightly tap it in. This one's the hard one. And then this one, um, Home Depot as well, get some PPC pipes. It fits perfectly over it where it doesn't damage the inside or anything. So you just put it in and just kind of just kind of tap it nice and even inside. Try not to do it at an angle because it's it will it'll just angle dip, it'll, it'll just be at an angle and that can cause the the leak on the axle itself. That's it and that's how you um just put it on and then you put the axles in. Try to clean the hole.
cut a little bit, a little bit. It in by hand. Let's put the axe, let's put the seal on. Looks good. It's nice and flat against the transmission and the ring still on there because you don't see it popping up. And it is an LSD transmission. There's a little bar in the middle. It's a it's a 95 turbo, so that's it on the passenger side. Alright, the driver's side. Just clean this clean the wall out. And then just clean any grease you have that's your old axle made, all the grease flying everywhere. Go ahead and loop the cylinder, loop the wall.
nice and even all the way around. Make sure you hammer it in um, nice and flat and you never want to angle it. If you angle it, the ceiling ain't going to go in. It's like nice and even all the way around. All right, here's the new axle that's been rebuilt. So I got some new boots, some new internal cages, bearings. These are gonna go in the car. All right, this next part is installing the axles. With these, um, what you wanna do is, what I usually do is um, kind of wrap the whole axle in a blanket. Um, the reason why is, you see these little, when you're moving around, in this area, there's a lot of sharp, sharp metal, um, like sharp corners that can actually damage the boot when it touches it. So what I found out that most of the shop that does it, you know, they put it in without, without, without covering the boot. And then when they slide it in, when they slide it in, they let it sit on top of the, the ball joint or like, you know, any suspension part that can actually rip the boot out. And then like, like, like even a small little tear can actually um, ruin this whole boot and then you have a whole leak again and, and do all this process again. So what I, what I personally do is I just wrap the whole axle in like with a big towel and then just slide it in. So this one's a little tricky. Just take your time on it. Let's see if I can loosen up this control arm bolt. I can move it down a little bit. Really flex. Now I have a leather job pushing it in. Pretty much ready to go in. Just gonna push it in. There you go. Slide in place. All right. So what I did was, I pretty much just kind of like push it in my hand and it'll slide right in and go ahead and let the axle and everything sit on the towel and I'm just gonna push Up, 
Back into the axle. Release the strap. I'm gonna take out the strap now. And lower the ball joint. into the hub again. There we go. Going to the groove. That's it. Go ahead and uh, take out the towel. Perfect. And always hand, always hand tighten the bolts back in. The ball joint. Never want to shoot in with a gun. Just hand. Go by hand first. And you're gonna torque it. Impact gun, lightest setting. And then we're going to torque it again at 217 foot pound. The big axle nut for the E153 transmission turbo Mahab. All right, same thing with the other side. I'm going to loosen up this control arm bolt. So that way it's easy to go up and down. And then be sure to retorque it again. Has more flex now. Same thing with the passenger side axle. Just uh, wrap it, the boot area. Slide in.
that's it. You slide in, put the C-clip back in again, into the groove. Still looks good. You see what I mean by little sharp edges? Like these sharp edges, this clip stick sticking out, it could rip out the boot. So that's what I do, so you can do whatever you want. Like the little sharp edges right here. Remove the strap. There, get the ball joint in. Same rule apply. Can't hit my hand first. It's not going in, she's a flathead. There you go. pretty much it get the c-clip clip back in and then just tighten everything up again all right so pretty much for the clip right here what I do is I just pull it down by my finger so it's easy to pull down and then um, once everything's good the seals cup then go ahead and um, tighten up the axles Tighten up the axle nut, axle nut, put the rod back, the hub back, torque, tighten all the 17 mil ball joint, and then um, tighten up the suspension component, cross member 19 mil, 17 mil, 17 mil, 19 mil, 17 mil, 17 mil, and reinstall the ABS line if you have it. put back the strut bolt and then I'm gonna replace the rotors anyway since the pads are pretty worn on this guy and then I'll might as well paint the calipers and all that stuff so and then um, put the ABS line back so and then when you bring the car down um, you're gonna torque that axle enough for at 217 foot pounds all right, so according to the BGB, the MR2 Bible, 1995 MR2 Turbo, 217 foot-pound, the axle nut.
and then the two bolts for the lower bar joint it's 83 foot pound so this two bolt on the bottom right here 17 mil 83 foot pound okay so according to the mo2 bible the strut bolt it's 127 foot pound which are these two guys 127 foot pound and what I did is I reversed the bolt to this side so it doesn't it doesn't interfere with the caliper and then the suspension arm is 76 foot pound which is this guy back here 76 foot pound Next one is the strut bar from the rear, 87 foot pound, which is this guy right here. That was 87 foot pound. And make sure this guide's out here. You hold it with the wrench and this while wow, you torque the side. That one's 87, and then the other one was on the cross member. It's 83 which is this guy right here, 83 foot pound, okay? All right, go ahead and lower the car down, pull the e-brake up, and then torque the axle nut to 217 foot pound, 217 foot pound, put the cap, the axle nut cap, and then put the brand new car to pin back in. Same for the other side. So that's all you really need. 217 foot pound. Okay. Um, don't over torque the axle nut because it's going to be a pain in the butt like I did earlier to remove it. I broke I broke my half inch bar because of that and then go ahead and uh, refill re refill the transmission fluid um, my other YouTube video um, I'll show you how to do that so there's a link below you can click on that as well so that's pretty much it on how to replace um, the axles on the MR2 turbos all right I hope this helped